audiences. You also experienced, uh, you also just did the Menti thing. So you just got an idea, but we want to go a bit further with that. And then another very, very important thing, once you know the messages and the audience you want to speak with, there are different products that are communicated through different channels. So it's also very important to, to go through it. And we will try to do it together. Um, so be ready, as Charlie was saying, um, because we will, uh, we will go through this uh, process. So what are our selling points, our key messages? We will try to define them together. And then again, together, we'll try to define the target audiences of CCCM. Then there will be a part that will be specific on saying one message, one message based on who you have in front of you, because it's very different. Whoever is in front of you is not the same. So we will see it uh, uh, during the session. And then at the end, we will mention the, um, some of the CCCM activities, products, and channels. But again, it's also, uh, we will uh, be hearing from you a lot. So it's not uh, that we are saying what is right and what is not, but we want to hear it from everyone. That's why there is a, a, a set of instructions that are really important to follow today. So first instruction is keep your phone ready because we have uh, become pro on menti.com this week, but there won't be any, any menti now. You will go to the CCCM social media and that's how you will interact with us. So there won't be any menti. So that's why you need to be ready. And if possibly already now, open one of these two, these two social media that you are more familiar with. So if you have a Facebook account, please open camp coordination and camp management cluster page because you will see things coming there. And if you have already an Instagram account, no need to open it and to register, it's quite long. So if you don't have, no worries. Uh, go to the Instagram uh, account of CCCM, which is again, CCCM cluster, yeah? During the session, you will be divided into uh, some groups and uh, you will be asked to answer to some questions. Please use only one platform. So all the questions will be published through Facebook post, Facebook story, and Instagram story. If you are familiar with social media, you might know it, but I'll repeat it for those who are not. If you answer below a Facebook post, your answer will be public. So just take that into account. While Instagram stories and Facebook stories, you will reply bilaterally. So only the admins of the, of the account will, will see it. So you choose whatever you want, but don't reply three times. So if I'm Marco, let's say I want to reply to uh, the first question on social media, I will choose the one I'm more um, happy with and I will respond only there. I hope it's clear. So don't reply three times to different platforms, choose one. And then, because it will be a group work, so you will, come uh, with, uh, with an answer from the group. So at least for each of the groups, provide one answer in the social media. So let's say you are five people, uh, you decide what, uh, what you agree upon, and then you send one answer, at least one answer to the social media. Why we say at least? Because you can also reply uh, to the social media from your personal uh, point of view but at least we want uh, to, to have more interaction. At least we want one answer. These are the instructions. There is a small note on the use of social media that is good to repeat here. It's general, not for this specific session, but it's good to repeat it. Jorn, you want to say it? Well, um, it is of course to use it to it. Uh... Caution, uh, we, uh, we are personal and uh, my Facebook account may uh, have a picture of me uh, half naked uh, jumping in the sea, but uh, in many of our, the roles we have professionally, may, we may be, uh, we may be um, linked uh, to the professional role and uh, 
use cautions and uh, ensure that you understand that um, you are, you may often uh, be regarded as the CCM coordinator rather than uh, Marco in the, in the Yemeni setting. Uh, the hats are different, to, uh, difficult to split, so ensure that uh, you are alert and cautious about uh, your agency's uh, guidelines. And uh, if you're in doubt, uh, we all have guidelines to refer to. Thanks, Jorn. And, uh, and uh, of course, I mean, we'll do this session through social media. We thought it would be um, fitting with the, with the session today, with the content. Uh, but of course, at the end, you will see it will give us uh, some other uh, communication products because social media is just one format and is not even a content. We will go, we'll clarify it more throughout the session. Uh, first thing first is to find key messages. So what is it that we want to say to the, to the world? Jorn, what is that? We want to say that we are important. Uh, really, I should have um, uh, been on the stage and jumping around and uh, say, are you with me? Because this is so important what we do. Actually, we want to discuss why we're relevant and to whom we're relevant. Because uh, this displacement and uh, migration uh, has been relevant since um, Homo erectus left uh, the Rift Valley in search of closing the gaps in safety, protection and food security and the necessities. And, uh, to achieve acceptable standards and, uh, and, and obviously also they wanted to decide for themselves. Uh, people have feet and trees have root. Migration and uh, displacement will continue to happen. And uh, with, the, with the population bulge, we will have to expect more displacement than uh, the current 80 millions. Uh, and uh, whether it's caused by conflict or disasters or deteriorating conditions, um, uh, it, uh, it is often people's last choice, but it has always made a part of our history. And uh, with the 12 billion we expect to inhabit the world in 2050, we'll have to expect uh, some rise in numbers. Um, yeah, maybe jump to the next one now. Because we see that we have an important role to play. We work uh, with people where they are, when they are displaced, and um, we work on the grassroots. When uh, there is domestic violence in a tent, we see it and we have to deal with it. The accountability of the woman being beaten or the family that has uh, in the low quality water provided is something that is revealed on the grassroots level. Our role is to see the gap and to ensure that uh, it is closed. And by this present, uh, presence at the grassroots level, we inform the blue overarching important work of uh, actors like OCHA and uh, national authorities and uh, also other sector sectors. But by being present at the grassroots and for long, we are the ones who are providing access for uh, services uh, to the people of concern, and we're uh, providing uh, access for the people to the services. Uh, so I just wanted to show you this uh, brilliant drawing that we <laughs> might, uh, that might inspire us. Uh, and uh, and then switch to the next one because we do have a lot of reasons to take pride in the work we do. 
And uh, now is the time I would like to jump around on the stage and say that this is important because we see uh, with the climate and uh, the climate changes and uh, and also this this year with the COVID that new patterns of displacement demands new solutions and that uh, CCM is evolving uh, with the context uh, and uh, and that we are constantly adapting to local needs. Maybe 25 to 40 percent of uh, what we do have some kind of specific guidance, but the rest is clearly adapting to the context. Uh, and by doing that and by defining these gaps, we are providing accountability both for humanitarian operations but also face-to-face -face accountability from each, uh, from the side of each of us and um, we base this on the close dialogue with the people uh, we meet uh, currently there are there is a struggle going on to say that we are community engagement and accountability focused in the different sectors on the top levels even uh, gutierrez probably says that uh, accountability to affected populations is a part of the game but the face-to-face -face accountability that we provide and that allows for access for other actors to deliver their services is one of our strengths uh, and uh, we uh, do this kind of coordination from the grassroots perspective where we lift the content and the information to higher level decision making and ensuring ownership and buy-in from national authorities and other actors and i uh, We'll also say that uh, the the length of camp operations is one of the important strengths because you can't talk about durable solutions if your work is limited to setting up a physical infrastructure. Every physical infrastructure you put up has social implications and the social infrastructure that is built is uh, is built uh, within uh, within the camps or the settlements we work in and if we are able by our presence to ensure safe and sustainable settlements we are going to be very relevant in the foreseeable future and this was meant as uh, taste bits uh, to kind of inspire your thinking and uh, to inspire your pride because uh, as uh, Marco and uh, Sara we, uh, we discussed it we uh, we almost get as many questions uh, if we go on a two-week vacation to Greece as if we go on a six-month uh, mission to Yemen when we come back to our uh, local communities or groups of friends they will always uh, ask the same amount of questions oh is it interesting and uh, yeah were you happy with the travel but in reality these are points that we should uh, take to the breast and uh, uh, and that should make us proud and we want to be able to explain this to our mothers and grandmothers as well as to the donors that will have to walk hand in hand with us for the future. Voila, I think that's what I had to say. Thanks for the inspiration, uh, Jorn. So as Jorn said, that's this only uh, holistic uh, inspiration, but we really need to stretch all, the, all this into strong uh, key messages. And uh, so we'll need to find together in groups, what are uh, three bold, strong messages on, uh, on CCCM? Chara has some tips before uh, dividing us into groups. So Chara, over to you. Thank you very much, Marco. And thanks, Jorn, for your, uh, for your words. They were inspirational, practical, and useful. 
if I must say so myself. No, just as Marco said before we started off, and I'm uh, just happy to be here to support you guys. Uh, but just before we start off with the group sessions, we wanted to just give a couple of tips on uh, how to communicate in a clear, concise, and effective manner. Um, I'm sure you all know this, but it's, I think it's worth remembering and pointing in what we're gonna just see in the next slide is the power of three. It's just an image, no words over here. And this is an extremely powerful concept in writing and communications. Uh, it actually finds the basis, the power of three, or sometimes it's called the rule of three in neuroscience. Studies have shown that the brain uh, finds it relatively easy to grasp concept, visuals, or verbal in groups of threes. Every story has a beginning, middle, and an end. So the first time we say something, it, it's an incident. The second time we say it, it's a coincidence. But the third time we say it, it starts becoming a pattern that people remember. But as soon as you add one more, when you make it four, uh, the retention falls off considerably. And studies have shown this. I mean, I encourage you all to go to Google and YouTube after this and look at the rule of three and power of three and look at speeches. You'll see this in all speeches and they use it really well. Lincoln said, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Caesar said, I came, I saw, I conquered. Always three. Obama was the master of this in recent times. He would, he would infuse the power of three into his sentences. He would say, and I'll count it off so you can see it. We carry this message that out of many, we are one, that while we breathe, we will hope. And that when we are met with cynicism, doubt and fear, we will respond with that timeless creed that sums up the spirit of the American people in three simple words. Yes, we can. This three, you, you find it everywhere. You find it in the books, you find it in speeches. And I think it's an, we think it's an important tool when now you're gonna start developing, surprise, surprise, your three key messages. So try to use this when you're trying to develop those, keep it as short as possible and concise as possible. Uh, that's it, I hope that's helpful, trying to keep it very short. And I believe now you'll be split up into groups. As Marco had said, once you're defining your key messages, please, please start posting them. You can do one or all three of them, uh, your messages, but please just pick one, either the Facebook post, the Facebook story, or the Instagram story. I'll throw it back to you, Marco, for any last uh, words. So what, what will happen, you will see this, uh, this card, defining three key messages on CCM, on Facebook, and on, on the stories right now. Uh, you'll be divided into groups. If I'm not mistaken, your group will have a name. So you can either write the group name and say, I remember one group is called Stadium, and you will see later on why that group is called Stadium specifically. So you can either write Stadium dot dot, and you put one key messages, one key message. Or you can respond personally, but while you are doing the group work. So don't uh, do it at the end because you will have only 10 minutes to define these tricky messages. Define at the beginning who's gonna post for the group. So whoever is the most uh, tech uh, savvy, uh, choose him or her. And uh, so you are, uh, you are clear from the beginning who's gonna post. And uh, as soon as you find one key message, you post it uh, and we will uh, take them uh, live basically. Uh, so now our tech support uh, guys uh, will divide it into uh, groups with the names, I guess. And the uh, magic of the groups will start now. Let's go. Let's go. Open all groups. Yeah, so we have a lot of uh, interesting uh, posts coming in. And, uh, and it's very clear that... Uh, People are proud of what they do. Uh, we welcome um, more uh, posts, uh, so please go ahead. But it's, um, for example, uh, that you, the work you do uh, is uh, affecting uh, the populations directly and, uh, and that you are making a difference every day. That is uh, a very strong uh, message. 
to to have the feeling that the your work is uh, so meaningful for the people uh, uh, is uh, is uh, really a strong motivation to um, to to continue to improve the work we do okay so we're back in the rooms uh let's see what what came uh in the social media this is the first one out of a series of exercise in the same way so maybe this one you were not that familiar but it will be the same so the next also the next ex exercises will be posted on facebook as a post or on instagram as a story and facebook story so you choose the platform you you prefer and you reply I'm feeding in the comments and uh, uh, Jorn and Chara, over to you. <coughs> yeah, so Chara, we have a lot of inspirational quotes coming in and, uh, and we would like to see uh, much more of you because uh, this is really related to the day you do, uh, uh, the, the work you do uh, every day and uh, and to, to have a direct uh, effect on the uh, lives of uh, IDPs uh, and to, to feel that you make a difference every day. That's uh, such a strong uh, <laughs> comment and, uh, and a way of uh, uh, motivating yourself for the work you do. Absolutely. And then most importantly, it's the, it, this is really will help us if we gather a bunch of good key messages it will be like our toolbox that we can pick and choose to use these messages with the appropriate audience that we'll see now in the next sections in certain settings so we don't have to say uh, CCM, uh and <laughs> struggle to give our selling points but i think some nice ones are going to be coming out of this i was just listening into one group that had a very good key message which I still don't see here. It's going to hmm. pop up. But these are very good now that's coming up, Jorn. Yeah, I think that uh, what we see here is that the concrete ambitions of uh, humanitarian responses uh, is uh, what we are actually making happen. We are there to, to ensure uh, the protection, the assistance, and empowerment uh, of displaced people. and. Uh, uh we we do it by being in close coordination uh, to these populations yeah i like that one too and it has the power of three within the sentence itself mm -hmm. i like here as well on the bottom to do no harm enhance human infrastructure and engage in response is there something else at the end i don't see the the writing there engage and respond. engage and response locally locally okay yeah where people are when they need it uh, and uh, and also with regards to the trainings it's uh, it's uh, very important that uh, we have been adapting we have been uh, developing programming according to the needs uh, forced upon us by the pandemic and um, and uh, you who work with this you uh, see that my my work is to ensure that in the relevant context we are working now in my local context we are adapting programming to ensure it meets the needs of people i think we have some more coming in on facebook uh, posts as well i'm seeing a message i know the group that i was in was going to do the facebook post Marco communicate yeah sorry communicate collaborate and uh, coordinate very nice uh, let's see if uh, bruce can i'm uh, sharing uh, directly the comments on facebook because they came uh, all uh -huh. now so now you can read a lot more <laughs> sorry for that 
<laughs> I didn't refresh the page. So you can read them all now. There are seven. Uh -huh. This is the one I was talking about. Engaging and empowering local communities in achieving sustainable solutions. That was a nice one that came out of the group and it hits three, three points. Yeah, and it speaks well, very well to the work we do. It is uh, nevertheless a last resort, but uh, we are there to uh, improve the conditions and to provide the durable solutions to to build the sustainable settlement or to <laughs> enhance the sustainability of settlements uh, to, and also to prepare them for a new shock. So uh, I think that captures the kind of holistic ambitions in a very good way. Mm -hmm. I see here two, two messages that can go hand in hand, one by Maxine. So it starts with CCCM ensures protection, assistance, and empowerment for displaced people. And then the supporting message, we do this through coordination, participation, and providing safe environment. I, I'm so happy that I'm seeing these elements of three appearing in these messages. <laughs> it's useful. Your message got through. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, keeping the key messages in mind, uh, we will, uh, I think we will go through the next uh, exercise. But don't forget this first part because uh, you, all of us, we have just discussed about what are the key messages. It will be like a gradual process that we will do together. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll uh, uh, stretch it a bit and, and see how these messages work depending on the, on the audience. Uh, was in front of us. Um, so the next exercise, while I'm putting the, uh, the, the presentation, it is on, uh, on defining the uh, main audiences of CCCM. And Chara will, will explain a bit, very simple uh, compared to the first one, but it's the same way as before. So you will be divided into uh, the seven groups, the same groups uh, as before, and you will see these questions coming on either Facebook post, Facebook story, or Instagram story. A bit, a little reminder then, you will not see an Instagram post, you will see the question just if you open the, the story. So if you're not familiar with Instagram, uh, no need to use it, you go directly on Facebook, otherwise you click on the stories, Instagram stories. So Chara, what is it this uh, exercise about? Very, very short intro to this one. This, it, it's extremely important to define our audience and our target audience, because once you define your target audience, then you adapt your messaging according to, accordingly. So if it's a government official that you're talking to, your message is gonna be different. If it's gonna be the general public, if it's gonna be the media, then your message is different. So in this session, we're just asking you to define those four key CCCM audiences for our work. What are those four key CCCM audience? Over. Again, because before dividing into groups, again, you select one person. If you, at the beginning, uh, this one person will post on behalf of the group, if not the group members have either Instagram or Facebook. So again, define who's gonna write so you can write as we go. Even if you find, if you think about one or two, send it over so we can start putting them on the screen. Alisa, you can divide them into the groups. Marco, Charlie? one person wrote to me very quickly just to say that they, no one in their group used the different social media platforms. So could they just message you in the chat directly or just email you a message and you could share? I had to it? say it. Yes, sorry. Sorry, person. Sorry, group without social media. Of course, put it in the chat. And uh, as you have the name, you can write like elevator. These are our thoughts. Sorry, we will read them. Not me because I don't see the chat, but <laughs> Jon and Chara will do. Thank you. So, Alisa, you can divide. Magic. <laughs> Lord, how are you? Well, uh, I feel kind of uh, empowered and I, I take uh, all of this to, the, to my heart because it fills my daily work with meaning. 
and I and I'm really sorry that uh, we we need to to be able to articulate better uh, what we do and why we do it, and uh, and I think these are very important steps to lift uh, the experiences of people out in the field and uh, and to uh, yeah to to think through these topics because we will be met with the. Uh, uh, situations where uh, where we are asked, but why why are you here? We uh, we take uh, we uh, we protect our citizens. Or uh, absolutely, why? absolutely, which is one of the target audiences that's coming up a lot over here. This is the government, national mm. authorities, where they would be the ones that would probably say, "What are you doing here? That's our job." Mm. So how are we going to frame our messages according to national authorities or governments? I'm seeing over here. The what's coming out from here and from the chats also is uh, the actual the affected population themselves. So who we're targeting, who we're working with as a as an audience. Um, I see here there's a distinction here made between local NGOs. And then some have said international community, so international NGOs mm -hmm. as two different distinct groups, which makes sense. We would change our messaging accordingly. Yeah. Both of them. And, you, yeah. you use and a lot of jargons and mm -hmm. uh, complicated words with mm -hmm. INGOs mm -hmm. and useless words. And of course, the the main actors will vary with your context. In um, in Beirut, you might have uh, 13 sects that you need to communicate with and uh, the differences in power relations and um, and also with regards to religious leaders, as Vito mentioned, it's, uh, it's important. Absolutely. And also then, how is your communication adaptable to the different stakeholders. If, uh, as it says here, uh, you are developing communication to the donor, does that communication also benefit your approaches to the private partners? Are, are you trucking in water from a private partner? Then perhaps uh, you need to better ensure that they understand the standards we work after. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good one. In terms of donors, there's going to be different kind of donors. If we're getting help from the private sector, it'll be a totally different message than the, just mm. the traditional donor that we work with. And then it's interesting what you said in the community as well, with the affected population and host community, we would need to adapt our messaging accordingly to different sects, different ethnicities. Here, there's religious leaders as well. Uh, as a as a target group, they're they're an important player. Um, so yeah, we'll it's, it's over there. It's okay. Uh, the the Ministry of Foreign Affairs may be very occupied with the sustainability and uh, and uh, clean energy these days, but uh, it's not uh, clear that uh, the main religious leader in your uh, uh, site will be the same. Uh, they might be uh, more occupied with the uh, moral challenges and uh, and to uh, ensure that uh, people behave in certain manners to to, to build <laughs> respectful communities. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm gonna stop you here because uh, we have a time limit. Um, so, for everyone, we together identified what are the key messages on CCCM and who are the main audiences that we are speaking to when we speak about CCCM. Take those in your mind, in your brain, save them because you will need to use them later. But now we will do an exercise because in order to shape the key messages in front of the key audiences on CCCM, we need to adapt messages according to who is in front of us. So what we will do now, you already divided into groups and those groups had uh, um, nice names. Uh, so each group will be assigned to a specific scenario. So you will see again, either on Facebook or on Instagram, 
by the way, not many people are commenting on Instagram stories. So if you have Instagram, do it. It's nice. Um, you will see the following scenarios. Scenario one for the grandma uh, group. You need to explain uh, what is CCCM to your grandma. She's 80. Uh, oh, one, no. thing for, one thing for all the groups is that uh, you have 30 seconds maximum to do this exercise. So be conscious that you need to explain whatever I'm saying now in 30 seconds, regardless of who you have in front of you. So that's for the grandma group. The TV news group, you are invited to speak uh, during a TV news. So it's a, you know, they, they say breaking news. So you have 30 seconds to explain what CCCM is in a live TV news. The third group, kids. So um, you are the father or, or the mother of one of the kids that is going to this summer school. And uh, all the parents have to present themselves and say what they do to the kids. So please find a way that the kids will understand what you do. Yeah? You are inside the summer school. You still have 30 seconds. Elevator group. By chance, because you just went to the UNHQ, you met the director of ECHO, one of the biggest donors, in the elevator, by chance, right? And you have from floor one, when the floor where he enters in, to floor nine, so you have around, again, 30 seconds to explain why he should fund CCCM in nine floors. Artist, you are calling an artist and you need a, uh, to make a commission to this artist, not a painter necessarily, can be any artist, musician, whatever, an art product on CCCM. So in this phone call, he's a very famous artist. You have 30 seconds to say, we need this and that, okay? The sixth group is uh, very easy, followers. So what are you saying to your personal, uh, personal followers on your personal social media about what you do on, on CCCM? So yeah, you, you will decide. And the stadium group, is it the name stadium? So basically you are at the, uh, it's, uh, it's the 11th of July, next uh, July and you are at Wembley Stadium, and you have the chance to write something on CCCM that the whole world will see, because you have the ticket for Wembley and you are one of the, lucky, one of the few lucky ones. So what would you put in your, in your uh, sign? Okay, the answers of this exercise will not be sent on the, on the social media, but we will ask group by group to respond. So after you come back from your groups, we will say grandma, and then you will have only 30 seconds to show us, to tell us anything you want, be as creative as you want. What would you say to your grandma? And so on. Then we'll say second group TV news go, and you have 30 seconds. So be very specific within the group to select either one spokesperson or the way you want to show it. So think of the message and think also very importantly on the way you want to show it to us. It can be anything. Yeah, and uh, from the chat here, uh, once again, Marco, how do you post it? You open no. your social media and- No, 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 this time you don't post it. This time you will need to reply to yeah. us. So we'll call out the group in the plenary when the group sessions are, are out, we will say, Grandma, tell us. Mm. And you'll put your camera uh, and show us, tell us anything. Yeah, yeah. Remember Sorry. that we have 30 seconds. So be creative, but uh, we don't need you to comment on the social media. Although you will see the scenarios in the social media, they're very nice. So you'll see picture by picture, these pictures. Is it clear? Can we divide it into groups? Do you see any other key questions in the chat? So I repeat. Think of the message, you have 30 seconds, according to your audience, and then think very well on who is saying it in the plenary. 
So is it one person? Is it everyone? You want to take a picture? Uh, mm. and, but remember that you, you will be called out. So we'll say, kids, go, and you have 30 seconds. All clear? Let's go. Good Let's luck. do it. Be creative. Alisa, make your magic. <laughs> so there, I have news for you. You are the ears and the hands of the humanitarian responses. And I really think that you should take pride in it. Tara, that's a strong statement. We'd go on any TV channel, don't you think? Uh, yes, absolutely. I totally agree, Bjorn. You have not lost me at all. <laughs> okay, so everybody's coming back to the plenary. We hope uh, you are all ready. Ready or not, we will call you. We'll call out each group. Remember, we will step over after 30 seconds, so you really need to be coincise but uh, you can do whatever you want. Uh, we hope you decided who does what uh, within the group. Uh, is everyone back or, or people, or, or, or it takes time to get back to the plan? I think they're all back, right? I don't know technically. <laughs> Elevator, you will need to improvise because you, you met by chance this echo director, so it's perfectly fine, actually. You were not prepared. So that's the right question. But let's call for group one, Grandma. Over to you, Grandma. What are you saying to your grandma? This is Amani. Amani, are you there? Hello. Yes, I'm here. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm seeing my grandma today, and I will tell her like this. Grandma, we are going to, uh, to give a hope for the homeless people, providing them with secure and warm shelters, providing them with their essential needs. And every, every um, now and then, we would check if they're comfortable or there is uh, any other needs so we can help. This is what we do. Thank you. That was very good. Thank you, Grandma. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you. Second group is a group who is invited to speak during a TV news, so it, in a breaking news kind of setting, and you, ex, and you have to explain what is CCCM and why it's important in 30 seconds in a TV, in a national TV news live. Now, TV news, over to you. Barca, I think you should... Uh... Okay. Yeah, so... Uh... We are supporting and improving the quality. Uh, we are supporting and improving the quality of life by being present uh, and being the ears and the hands of the humanitarian responses. Thank you. Thanks. That's a very strong message. Thank you, TV News. Group number three, you are in a summer school and you are in front of 30 kids and you have to explain what are you doing as parents. So they're all, we are all kids now. Tell us what you're doing. Kids, go ahead. Children, how many of you feel lucky that you have friends beside you right now? Can you raise your hand if you feel lucky you have friends? Yeah. And who had a full tummy last night when they went to bed? A, a nice warm supper, yeah? And you have your toys and your friends to play with and you have mommy and daddy close by. Not everybody has that chance. So we have to help those children, those boys and girls who are separated from their mommies and daddies right now or their cousins or their toys. And we have to help them so that they have bright future. I, I have like uh, chills, uh, very good kids, very good. Great job. Um, now we are in the elevator. So you are inside the elevator, the echo director comes in. What will you say to him or her? Ding. 
Good morning. More people than ever are being forced to leave their homes in elevator country because of the escalating crisis. Um, the response has to be coordinated because there are many different actors who are coming in to try to make an impact. And we need to ensure that there are clear pathways for the affected people to express their needs and the gaps in service. If you provide CCCM funding, it will allow us to coordinate a response for protection, assistance, and empowerment of the people who have been displaced. Wow. I will wow. give you some money. Keep this, uh, <laughs> save this uh, statement because it might be needed for the next exercise. It's very, very cool. Very, and the metaphors, I will say something about the metaphors in a, in a bit, but uh, that's re really the way to, to use it. Uh, thanks very much, Elevator. Uh, the artist. So you have the phone number of a very famous artist. Explain him or her how to do an art product on CCCM. Artist. Uh, what we discussed is about what CCCM is. So basically, I said I was putting this. It was not my choice. So thanks you, thank you, colleagues, for putting me in the spot. I said, look. I am the emergency unit of a hospital. We hate when people come to us, it's last resort. But when they come to us, we have to save their lives and do the best we can. When they feel better, we have to ask them leave to another department. When more people come, more than usual people come to us, we have to go to the state to say, what's wrong with you? You're not able to do things. More car accidents are happening. People are smoking, they are fighting, they are killing each other, so that's why we are full. So it is what I do is like an emergency part of the hospital. We hate it, but we have to do it. It's the most important thing of it. Over. And then it's up to the artist to decide what artwork to create with all of this. It will be challenging. Yeah? Thanks there and the group. Uh, next one. So you want to post something about your social media followers. Remember what Jorn said at the beginning that you have personal social media, but you want to say like, I'm doing something like uh, relevant and important. Uh, so what would you publish for your social media followers? So followers group, go ahead, 30 seconds. Thanks, that's me. Um, so our group was not big on social media. So we decided to do an analog version of social media where we were actually just speaking directly to our friends. Um, we then got slightly sidetracked from the, the brief about a video for the day and talked instead about how we describe CCCM and sort of focused in on describing camp management, um, particularly in a way that is not patronizing to the communities that we work with. Our friends back home um, in a way that resonated with them um, and sort of gave them some idea of, of what a camp is and then what camp management is. Um, discussed using the analogy of a camp is essentially a small town. Um, and then also the role of camp management within that being sort of equatable to being a mayor within that small town. Um, so I think when I speak to my friends, often assumption of camp management is there distributing the food and giving the water, um, but really trying to draw out what this coordination function is um, in a town back home, the mayoral role, of course, then coordinating between the different departments um, and engaging with families. Um, so not quite a video to social media, um, but an interesting discussion that we had. Back to you, Marco. Okay, if you put that into practice, show it to us one day. <laughs> Thanks to this group. Last but not least, the lucky ones who got the tickets for the final in Wembley, and they can show something. Show it to us, stadium. Okay, so this is the, the visual message. Is it, is it uh, obvious? Can you see it? Yeah, yeah that's you good. Can see. So this is our poster. And the message that we want to share in the stadium is that our world is ever changing with new global challenges. For displacement is an issue that is affecting a growing number of men, uh, women and children. It is a difficult game, but in this game, we are all in the same team. We are working closely with the community, engaging and empowering the communities to achieve sustainable results with a goal to leave no one behind. 
That's great. Can you show us again the poster? So I'll take a picture. Now, and now is the time for the poster and a wave. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Thanks. That was excellent. Uh, yeah, so we all uh, succeeded. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> So we got many cool ideas eh, from different groups. So we have uh, now we have something to, to say, whoever we meet, basically, because in the elevators, in the sports, uh, at home. So very well done. Uh, last thing, so we put all we did uh, so far together in the last exercise. So we need your last energy now. Do you see my screen? You all see it? Yes, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, yes. basically, we defined key messages at the beginning on CCCM. We defined your, uh, our main audiences. And now we need to shape it as a sound bite. So, we thought of multiple key messages, we thought of multiple audiences and multiple ways to communicate or, uh, in front of whoever we encounter. Now we will choose in each of the groups one key message, one audience, and we write that message. So it's very easy. OK, so each of the groups we will divide it into groups. You choose one key message and one audience. OK, so you will say to the donors dot dot that's your key message on CCCM. A sound bite, I will not go into details because that is like one entire session on it. A sound bite is uh, uh, taking what Chara said at the, at the beginning on, on key messages, is a, is a part of, of a key message, which always is formed by these 10 speech pat patterns, absolutes, emotions, metaphors, I remember the elevator group used metaphors in their message because they said escalation, escalating crisis, and they were, yeah, that was cool. That's a metaphor. Emotion, examples, rhetorical questions, because uh, it's more like into action. So you transform this key message into something like into a soundbite, which is any of these speech patterns, right? So like bold actions, bold action words, you can give one example uh, and so on. So these are just for you to know that uh, if you use one of them, it will, it will uh, be more uh, attractive to people that don't know what CCCM is. So it's a very simple exercise. I repeat, now Alisa will divide it into the same group. You choose one key message and one audience on CCCM and you create a sound bite using, if possible, one of the 10 speech patterns, absolutes, cliche, bold, action words, metaphors, etc. Without wasting any more time, Alisa, divided into groups, last exercise, what are we doing with those? We will publish them and as messages on CCCM. In our Give us statements with a punch. Yes, statements uh, with a punch. The best ones will be selected and will be published as okay. a statement. On so CCCM. on the count of three, one, two, two three. Three, magic. Uh, welcome back everybody. So thanks for sending us the sound bites. For the sake of the time, we just received uh, one sound bite. Uh, how should CCCM engage and respond locally? towards local NGOs and stakeholders. This is a great soundbite. Uh, <laughs> if you didn't have time to post them, either up, uh, below the Facebook post or, in, or on Instagram, uh, do it also later because the best couple or the best three will be posted from the CCCM social media accounts. Um, so do that if you didn't do before, there will be time we'll, we'll publish later on or or uh, tomorrow as a result of this session. Uh, I see another in the chat, do all displaced men, women and children have the right to 
have a dignified life. Thank you, Stadium, for the government. Great. Um, okay, so we did together, we did this path together, identifying key messages, who is your audience, uh, to whom you want to say the message, and then we, we try to create some bites. So we wanted everyone to experience a bit what, what does the whole thing on having messages, strong messages that we have, but what are the challenges on communicating them? And the social media exercise that we did, it, it's just part of it because there is a lot of, of communication activities and products that, uh, that can be done. And actually social media, that would require another session, but social media is just a format, a channel where you, where you put your messages. So it's just one out of uh, really hundreds of ways that you, that you can communicate on um so yeah. some and i i just uh, comment on that marco because yeah. uh, i rem remember from my studies that if you couldn't explain your thesis in three minutes then you really didn't know uh, what it was about and uh, today i uh, i did put on my beautiful shirt as you see ccm on the one side and echo on the sleeve and those that's from the days where we really were able <laughs> to communicate to the donor that they should invest in the work we do so please make sure that all the way from the mirror in the morning to the donors uh, floors you are able to communicate the value of your work and the importance of it thank you Jorn um, so as you see here, we have just a couple of examples of communication activities and actually we are speaking with the global team, whether to have like a specific session with cluster coordinators, for instance, uh, to go through some of them. So I will just uh, uh, put the ball now here just to mention that there, there is a lot of things that we can, um, uh, ways that we can communicate our messages. One, uh, if in any operation, we create a communication strategy. You do basically the same process that we did today. So what are the target audiences? What are the challenges and opportunities in communication? So there is no, uh, you know, internet connection, whatever. And then what are your key messages? What we did today. And only the product, the product is only the final part, right? So you establish all these elements and then you can have uh, a real, uh, useful and relevant product. And then you can, every agency has a communications team. So it's very easy to organize communication uh, uh, trainings with, uh, with CCCM partners, because there is a gap, you know? So the CCCM actor, the agency, the NGO that is working in, uh, in camps has a lot to say, <laughs> but then uh, sometimes there is no bridge with the, this team and the communications team. So do like uh, simple, agree on simple like communication skills so that whoever works in the camps can send uh, uh, products. We don't have time to show it, but yesterday I asked the DRC in Yemen, who is in, who is in uh, your sites today? And so they sent me a piece on camera. Uh, so one person of DRC, basically spoke in 30 seconds. I mean, this camp, these are the challenges here. We're working to improve them, the conditions in the camp. That's great, it's 30 seconds. And this person had a, made a very cool video and I said, publish in a DRC social media. They didn't think about it, but you know, sometimes just to bridge the, the, the gap between our technical expertise and the communication. And then you can do, there is a lot of social media partnerships opportunities because in every country, there are like 10, maybe, uh, CCCM partners, INGOs, NGOs. So whatever is said by one is relevant exactly. for the rest. So you can do partnerships on, on social media and websites. Really easy to do. Again, you can ask a bit of support from the communication team, even if it's one person, but it's very, uh, potentially, it, it gets echoed very much bigger than, than uh, your uh, specific technical uh, audience right and then speaking on outside events any sorts so it's a very good uh, practice right so 
also for us to test ourselves uh, as we did for the scenarios, right? How would you explain what are the challenges? So it's a very good test for us. And just to mention very quickly, uh, some of the communication products. I said one is a piece on camera, which this guy from DRC did. I will send you the presentation so you will see. But then you have like infographics. Many times we have like a, a report with 60 infographics or a huge website. Sometimes one figure is okay. So you see 30, 47 on the Syrians in Turkey are under 18. That's one figure extracted by maybe a big like you know figures of any any sorts you take one you do an infographic that's one of your key messages right and then as we did the in the center in the scenarios like the tv news you can create like briefing notes we have this challenge now we are trying to, to address it but it's a very strong advocacy um tool so you have one challenge and you want to say it and you want to say that you are uh working to improve to address this challenge you can make it in a briefing note again you know what to say you just put it in a communication shape right um yeah and then human interest stories your teams are uh, meeting people every time so you tell one story of one explains the word so those are very very effective because you see all the time stories of one person but that's that's uh, saying everything what what is behind no um yeah, so it was very uh, quick. Uh, you, hopefully Marco. we'll have like a specific uh, uh, session, but uh, yeah, that, that was just some uh, quick that's, that's ideas. Great. Thank, and, uh, thank you so much, Marco. And thank you, Jorn and Chara as well. A fantastic, engaging and very, very useful session. We're gonna take a 15 minute break, but now, and we'll start the next session at five to the hour. So we'll see you in 15 minutes. Enjoy your break. Enjoy the break.